drums were what I wanted to focus on next. However, once I began the process, I realized that uh, I have in here a drum rack that I call the Monster Chopper Rack. It's basically just a device or, or a series of devices, technically, that I put together, not just for drums, more specifically actually for chopping up samples. And so I kind of figured instead of just moving on with the production process, I would stop for a minute and kind of go into this drum rack and how I created it, why I created it the way I did, and basically just kind of go through the process of creating it so that you guys could make something similar at home, custom to your wants and needs, not necessarily exactly like this one. So I figured that's what we'll do on this one. We'll talk about that, and then we can go in and maybe make the drums as well. So within every drum rack, whenever you drop a sample in, it automatically pulls up this device here, a simpler instrument. The simpler itself has a bunch of different settings on it and if I drop a sample into a bunch of these pads like this I end up having to go in and make adjustments to this so I decided to make a simpler that's already has all of the adjustments the way that I want it so generally when I'm chopping samples into a drum rack such as this the way that I like it set up is as such so if I drop this sample in here, here is the sampler that it pulls up. So as you can see, it comes up in one shot mode and volume is set to negative 12, where velocity is set to 45%. So generally when I'm chopping samples, I like to have there not be any velocity. Velocity is good for me when I'm making drum beats, but not so much when I'm chopping samples. Usually want them all to be as close to one another volume wise as possible. So I always end up having to turn the velocity down and then I end up having to turn the volume up just to zero. If I click on classic here, I get a whole other list of options. It's set automatically to three voices and I usually keep it at one because when I'm chopping samples, I want them to only play one chop at a time. I generally don't want the samples to be overlapping with one another. And then if you look over here at the attack decay sustain release settings, Usually I have to adjust these as well. As you can see, release is on 60 seconds. So that means when I press the key, I let go and it's still playing. It's not really ideal for when I'm chopping samples. So what I usually do is leave the attack where it is at zero, turn the decay all the way up, sustain all the way up, and then the release, I usually turn, if not all the way down, just super far down. That way when I push the key, and I let go, it stops. As you can see, when I turn it all the way down, the stopping of it is extremely abrupt. If I leave a little bit, there's a slight tail to it. So that's an adjustment that I'd make based on the situation. So volume zero, release down, sustain up, decay all the way up. Voice one. Retrigger mode, usually fine. And so that's it. It's really simple. Not a whole lot of changes. However, just enough to where if I were to drag this sample into a bunch of these different pads, then I'd have to go in to each one of those samplers individually and make these small changes, which is kind of a pain in the ass. So that's why I've saved one here already called Chop and No Release. Basically that means that I've got a sampler that I have adjusted how I want with the release turned down, volume turned up, and the uh, velocity turned down. And then after I got that, then I come over here and click save. And as you can see, it comes up over here under simpler, which is user library. And then when you go to user library, then you'll have presets here. And then it's under instruments since it's a simpler. You find a simpler and then there's your presets. Now I'm going to get rid of this because I don't actually need it. But I do have this one here called Chop and No Release, which is basically just the exact one that I made. Okay, so once you have your simpler saved how you want it, the next thing would be to create a drum rack. So go to Instruments, and then bring a drum rack on there. The amount of pads on the drum rack that you're going to use is going to vary situationally, obviously. Depends on how many pieces of the sample you're actually chopping up. Just to make sure that I have more than enough, I have gone ahead and put this chop and no release simpler onto every single one of those pads. Okay, 
you don't have to keep dragging like I just did. If you want, you can click on the pad and then hold down the Alt or Option key and then just drag it over. So there's another quick way of filling up these pads. I'm just holding down the Alt Option key. Now this is all filled up with the chop and no release simpler that I like. You'll see that I have one here called Custom Chopping. This includes some effect macros, but we're not gonna talk about that just this second. So I'm gonna ignore that. The custom chop and what I've done now is what I said, which was what I just did, putting the chop and no release sampler onto each one of these pads. And then I took it a step further. I opened up this button here, IO, and on every one of these sampler instruments, you can adjust the choke group. Put them all on the same choke group. They're gonna come as none. So what you want to do is select one and then command A to select all and then change them all to the same choke group. Choke group one is just fine. Now, for those of you who don't know, what that does is make it more or less mimic what an MPC would do. In an MPC, you can set up choke groups. Choke basically means that when you play one button and then the next button, whatever is playing on the previous button immediately stops and gets choked out by the currently playing pad. So if I put this sampler, this sample, I mean, into here, then when I play this one, when I go to the next one, so I'm still holding this down. When I push the first one, holding it down, and I'm gonna push the next one while still holding this one down. As you can see, it stopped the previous one and is now playing the the only the other one that I'm holding down. So it chokes out the previous playing one even if you still have your finger on it. This means that you're gonna get extremely smooth transitions from pad to pad. You're never gonna have them uh, overlapping each other, if even for a second. Super handy for chopping up samples such as this, where basically what we would do is just go and find a start point. So as you can see, very effective for this type of situation. So once you have all of the samplers that you made loaded in to a group of 16, and then you've gone in and set the choke group, then you can come over here and you're gonna wanna use this save button. That save button is going to save the drum rack itself under the same thing, user library, presets, instruments, drum rack and then you can call that whatever you want. Now, whenever you load in that drum rack, it will be all ready to go with the choke set up and everything. Okay, so then the next thing that I did, as you can see on here, I have these macros set up to control certain effects. So let me demonstrate how that works. So what I've chosen to put on here is and will be probably completely different than what you will choose to put on. Personally, I've put an erosion on here. The reason I've done that is because I like to make lo-fi hip hop and so giving it the erosion effect kind of creates a little bit of that lo-fi character on things. Especially when I combine it with this 
filter cut off. So on top of the erosion, the amount, the erosion frequency, the filter cutoff, I've also got a compressor on here. I can adjust the dry wet, the compressor, and also the threshold. Okay, so let's get into how exactly we do that. So on your MIDI track that you've been using to create your device here, what you're going to want to do is go to audio effects and then open, uh, bring down an audio effect rack. Audio effect rack is basically just that, an empty rack for effects. Within this, you can put whatever you want. So the first thing that I put in mind was an erosion. So we just drop an erosion in there. And then after that, I put the filter. So you just drop an auto filter after it. Make sure that you're putting it in the rack and not to the side of it. And then after that, a compressor. And then what I've done is open up the macro knobs on the effect rack. And this is where you're going to assign the various parameters of whatever effects you've chosen to the various macro knobs. So for the erosion here, you're going to want to just kind of mess around with it. you want to use the sign or wide noise so what you do is you're going to hit the map key and then you're going to adjust the parameters. So we want to adjust the amount here. You just click amount and then click map and then it'll map it there. It'll automatically name it, but you might want to name it a little more detailed. So hit command R and put like erode amount. And then the other thing that you control here is the frequency. So click on frequency and then click map. And then again, command R and be more specific, erode frequency. You can just check that. Okay, then the auto filter. Same type of thing. Generally what you end up controlling here is the frequency. So we can just map the frequency. Click the frequency knob and then click map on whichever macro. Command R, put be more specific, filter frequency and then here on the compressor you might want to get to another setting here or just another view um, let's bring the knee all the way down and then what I've done is just uh, set up the compressor to react how I would want so generally I like to use it to give me a little more more loudness in that situation usually you want like a longer attack time and a shorter release time and then the ratio doesn't have to be too high even just three to one and then what's really going to control that is going to be the threshold. So we've got this playing. I bring the threshold down. As you can see, that really boosts it. So I want to map this threshold knob for sure. Map threshold. And then we'll choose a macro. Again, I want to specifically name it, so command R, put comp thresh. And then macro four, what I like is the uh, dry wet knob. 
So this is going to give you the ability to do some, uh, what's that called? The ability to mix the amount of compressed signal with, with uncompressed signal simply by using the dry wet knob. You have that all the way to 100, it's gonna be fully compressed signal. If you turn it all the way down, it's gonna be no compressed signal, and then you can get your little mixture of compressed and uncompressed. So as you can see, with the erosion on and the filter working together, it gives you kind of a lo-fi, kind of degrades the sound a little bit, not overwhelmingly though. And the sign setting is more like a bit crusher. And now you can add whatever else you want here. It's completely up to you. I only have these things on here for this particular device because I'm using it mostly for lo-fi. So, you know, if you want other things, you know, special reverbs, you can do that as well. You can even go in and with all the specific changes that you make to the individual effects, you can save the individual effects. Like your own custom erosion, your own custom auto filter, your own custom compressor, all those things. But if you're happy with the rack that you've created, then you need to hit save on the actual effect rack itself. When you hit save on it, it will bring it to the same place, user library, presets, this time under audio effects and audio effect rack. And then this is where you would name it. Command R, call it whatever you want. I'm going to delete that because I don't need that at the moment. But here's my audio effect rack that I made. It works great on this channel right now. However, there are macros on the drum rack itself. And so how do you get these things to work with your effects over here? What you need to do is right here, you can see where it says drop devices here. So that's where you're actually going to put it. Now, before you do this, if you have any samples in here, like I do, you might want to clear those out and just move your chopping or whatever back into there. Because we are going to be saving this. So you want to be sure that there's not samples loaded in there every time you drag it on here. Once you have this effect rack saved, down here where it says drop devices here, that's where we're actually gonna put it. So you wanna click the R for return, and then you can drop your effect rack in there. I'm literally gonna drag it over from there, or you can drag it in from up here, okay? So now I have the audio effect rack here, and as you can see, it's now combined into this actual drum rack. When I click on the drum rack itself, you can see it highlights everything, all these effects now. Now you want to get all these controls to work over here, because this stuff isn't gonna be open while you're actually messing with it. Once you open your sample back up, as you can see, boom, the effect rack disappears. So you wanna be able to control your effect rack with these knobs. So you're just gonna go map over here, and then you can grab these and map here, erode frequency, map, compressor threshold, compressor dry wet, map, filter frequency, reverb dry wet. I have to go in and make sure that these uh, are renamed because yours isn't gonna do that. Mine is because I already had these things named and set up for a separate effect, effect rack. Let me just go in and rename real quick. And you can see, you can test it by, when I turn this macro five, you can see the compressor dry wet over here being moved. And just make sure everything works as it's supposed to. Once that's all going, you're almost good to go. The only thing that's left is right here where you see send A. 
you just want to make sure they're all turned up. Now, you can still hear the sample being played cleanly and through the effect rack. If you only want to hear it being processed through the effects, then you would just hit solo here. As you can see, that gives you a 100% processed sound. So if I turn the filter all the way down, you can no longer hear it. Otherwise, let me show you the difference. Take this off solo. If I turn the filter all the way down, you're still getting signal. And once you've done all that, then you come here and you hit save. And now that's going to save it for you under user library, presets, instruments, drum rack. Boom. So I'm going to delete mine because I don't need it because I already have one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can make your own preset drum rack for chopping up samples. Or you can even make one specifically for drums or whatever you want to do. Hope you guys enjoyed this and got something out of it. On the next one, we'll go ahead and build the drums for the sample that we've got here. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. All right, thank you.